What's up everyone, it's Quan Pinguino. Today we're going to be deriving the Euler-Lagrange equations from the principle of least action as argued in Peskin and Schroeder chapter 2. So first, defining some of the formalism that Peskin and Schroeder use, we have the action denoted by S, which is a time derivative of the Lagrangian, and Lagrangian can be denoted as the spatial derivative of the, of the Lagrangian density. So they define the principle of least action as when a system evolves from one given configuration to another between two times, it does so along a path of configuration space for which the action is an extremum, normally a minimum. So the way that we can represent this mathematically is using something called a functional derivative. The functional derivative takes a function and perturbs it by some infinitesimally small other function. We have to use a functional derivative instead of a classical, you know, derivative that we're usually used to because the action itself is dependent on the path that you take when integrating. So for the action to be an extremum, what we need to require is that the functional derivative be equal to zero, which means the perturbed action minus the original action must cancel out to zero. So from here, we can start algebraically manipulating our expression and notice that we can tailor expand the, what we had as S prime on the previous slide, which is our perturbed action uh, to first order in all of its arguments. After performing the Taylor expansion and plugging back into our original expression for the functional derivative, we notice that the zeroth order term of the Taylor expansion is just the nominal action, so it cancels out with the minus s that we already had. So now we can really start cooking. We take the second term in our equation for the functional derivative and notice that it can be integrated by parts. So after performing the integration by parts, which I tried to visualize a bit better using these blue and red boxes, we are left with these two terms. When evaluating the first term, we make the assumption that the boundary conditions are fixed and given to us. This allows us to just cancel out the first term entirely because the variation of phi evaluated at t1 and t2 must go to zero since the boundary points are both fixed. Now it's smooth sailing. We just take our result and plug it back into our equation for the functional derivative of the action. We note that we're left with two terms in the integrand, which are both being multiplied by a factor of delta phi. If we want our action to be an extremum, by the principle of least action, we impose that the functional derivative of the action must be zero, and then this implies that the integrand must be equal to zero. Applying this result and setting the integrand equal to zero, we derive the Euler-Lagrange equations, which are the equations of motion for a field. This argument is quite concisely given in Peskin and Schroeder. However, they only do it in two lines. So the, the idea of a functional derivative and integrating by parts went over my head at first, so I thought I could make this short video to try to explain kind of what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed and you know, I'm still a beginner to QFT, so if I make a mistake or you guys have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching.